Hey guys, welcome to another episode of How to Modify Your MR160 DT Juke, Pulsar, Tita, whatever it is you have this thing in. Um, today we're not going to actually talk about a part, um, but we're going to talk about um, comparing performance between in, in the MR16 world. Um, we're going to talk about how to read dyno graphs, we're going to talk about where power is important depending on application, and we're going to talk about dyno numbers. I'm going to piss off a lot of you. Uh, as is what usually happens with some of these videos um, because I'm going to break up some of the beliefs that a lot of people have so let's get into that the first thing we are going to talk about is how to read a dyno graph. Uh, typically you have your engine RPM down the bottom and you have your torque on one side and your horsepower on another side and then you have it following on a graph. Like you can see here, this is just some random dyno that I pulled up uh, from the internet. Um, there is an equation to figure out horsepower. Torque is what is measured by a dyno, um, not horsepower. Horsepower is actually figured out in an equation. The equation is right here. There's a reason that on dynos, uh, the horsepower and torque cross at the 5250 mark, um, because that is part of that equation. As you can see here, it's in the equation 5250. Um, so horsepower is actually a calculation of torque. So torque is what a dyno actually reads. Horsepower is just figured out. That's why there's, you have kilowatts in like Australia and you have things like hub horsepower in Europe. And in America we use um, just horsepower, wheel horsepower. Um, so horsepower is just, it's, an, it's a thing we created. Torque is actual work of the engine. Now, when we're talking about a car with a small turbocharger like the MR160 DT has, um, it's important to remember that this was built for economy and it was built for low end torque. Small turbos make low end torque. That's what makes the car feel like it's really pulling off, um, but really the car's not that fast because the uh, engineers know that most people aren't going to be getting above 3000 RPM and most engineers know that most people don't need a ton of horsepower on the red line when they're trying to get good fuel economy. So we're going to look at a stock dyno graph. The green in this graph is my factory juke dyno pole. This is 148 all-wheel horsepower, 146 all-wheel foot-pounds of torque. Now you'll notice that the torque is very low. It's around 20, 2800 RPM is peak torque. Um, and that's how these small turbos work. You're gonna get your peak torque really down low. So then if you follow that torque curve, it drops drastically down to about 120 or 125 foot-pounds of torque. So you're going from 160 down to 125 by red line. Now, we look at our horsepower number. You can see the horsepower number is nice, it's smooth, it's straight, um, and it peaks out um, right where it's supposed to, which is at red line, because horsepower increases with engine RPMs typically depends on the torque curve. The reason um, I'm bringing this up is because the number, the peak number, really doesn't matter. Um, if you've ever been in a racing situation, or if you haven't, I'll explain it to you. Say you're racing from a dead stop. You run through that power band in first gear. Your car shifts, if, assuming you're using a stick shift. You go from, let's call it 6,500 RPM down to 5,000 RPM when you shift into that gear. Your car is only making as much horsepower and torque at that RPM range to redline. So if we look at this graph again, um, the car is only going to see at the most 135 foot-pounds of torque. Um, so it's not a lot of torque. That's not actually the torque number that the car is seeing. Um, so now, we're going to look at another dyno graph. This is one that I found online for the MR16 DDT. This is a tuned juke. So we're going to look at um, our torque curve. You can see the torque right here hits 300 foot-pounds of torque. Um, that's fairly low in the rev range. I can't see the number exactly. I want to say it's 3,000 RPM. That's when the turbo spools up completely. It's opened the wastegate. It's at its peak boost. Now, if you look at that same graph towards red line, you're making like 155 foot-pounds of torque, so your torque is less. 
So on these smaller turbos, they just can't keep up with the engine, the amount of CFM that the engine needs to be fed that much torque. So what happens is the torque curve drops off. Now, when the torque curve drops off that drastically, you also get a horsepower drop because I just said horsepower is a result of torque. Now, this car made 251 horsepower, peak horsepower. But if you look at Redline, uh, this car is only making like 210 horsepower. So you're losing, you're losing 40 horsepower between that peak horsepower mark and red line. That's a huge loss. You gotta look at it as when you're in a racing situation, that torque at the beginning, that's awesome, but you're gonna get wheel spin. Assuming you get past that and you don't get wheel spin, you get that crazy pull, yeah, you get the guy off the line. Now you gotta shift and you lose all of that horsepower and all of that torque. It's just, it's, you're, you're in that top portion. Yeah, you're gonna get a kick of torque as the turbo spools back up, but that torque's gonna quickly fade off and you're still gonna be at your peak horsepower level. The, what I'm trying to get at is, it drives me nuts when I see people uh, obsessing over peak horsepower and peak torque numbers. At the end of the day, they don't matter. They really don't matter. You're, if your peak number is not in your usable area, um, it really doesn't matter. Uh, so now we're gonna look at Jukes that have uh, big turbos on them, huge turbos. So for instance, uh, the WTF Juke that we just tuned has an 18G Blausch turbo on it. That's a big turbo compared to the factory turbo. So let's look at that. The car doesn't make its peak torque until 5,000 RPM. Okay, so it's got lag. Yes, it's got tons of lag. So it's not making a ton of power down low, but it's making a ton of torque up top. So it made 293 foot-pounds of torque at its peak at, let's call it 5,000 RPM. At red line, uh, the car is making just under a little below 250 foot-pounds of torque. So we're talking about a 50 foot-pound torque loss, which is a lot, but on average, we're still really, really high up there compared to the factory. Now we're gonna look at that horsepower number which comes from torque. The car makes peak horsepower um, before a little dip around 6,200 RPM. That's right at red line, right where it's supposed to be. And as you can see, the curve of that horsepower kind of follows the curve of that torque. Now you'll also notice that it makes 300 horsepower right at the peak torque and it makes that 325 basically at red line. So you have an increase in horsepower, there's no dip, there's no drop. Now this car, having driven it, I can tell you when you shift at 7,000 RPM uh, from second to third, which is the longest gear um, on the street that you're gonna be using, um, you know, typically you're not doing a race in fourth unless you're going like 160. So you're dropping down to right around 5,000 RPM, probably like 4,700. That turbo spools back up, you're back at peak horsepower, peak torque right away. So your area under the curve, as they say, is really high. Now, I'm going over all this because in the next video, I'm gonna talk about OEM turbo tuning and big turbo tuning and what's the difference in that. Um, each one has its place, uh, depending on what your goals are. Um, but I'm just doing this so I can tell you guys uh, the horsepower numbers aren't the deal. They're not the big deal. You can make, you know, look at Fiesta STs. They make 340 foot-pounds of tor torque on the factory turbo at 2,700 RPM, and then they have got absolutely squat at redline. So, you know, take, take that as it is. You're dropping 100 foot-pounds of torque. That's not very good. You're, you're pushing your turbo too far. You're out of its efficiency range. Um, your torque curve, when you're in the right size turbo and you're in its efficiency range, your torque curve will go up and then flatten out and it will stay flat while you're in full boost. That means you're in its efficiency range. So instance, on this 18G car, um, we were out of the turbo's efficiency range. Um, you can see the torque curve starts to die down and we're addressing that. But now if we go back to my car's dyno, um, when we swapped in the VF48 turbo, um, we went and got the car dynoed on the same dyno, which is the red lines on here. And as you can see, the torque didn't hit its peak until about 4,000 RPM, but it holds to red line. We don't have any sort of drop off. It holds to red line. Um, there's a drop off at the end that's probably just CVT noise. Um, and your peak horsepower is right at red line. So the car pulls a lot harder. Um, and in a CVT, you want your torque up high because the CVT, you're keeping your foot to the floor and you're staying at red line. 
So at redline, you want all the torque and you want all the horsepower. If all your torque is down low or is only when the turbo spools up, then when you're sitting at redline, your gear ratio is increasing, you're losing torque. So like you get into a factory juke and you punch it and you sit to the floor and you're going, going, going and it just feels like you're not really accelerating all that fast. That's because you're, all your power and your torque is down low. Um, whereas when you put a bigger turbo on, it's all up top. Uh, Chad, my buddy, uh, who's been for a ride in my juke and has his own all-wheel drive juke, um, can can tell you it's pretty pretty upsetting when you go from an untuned VF48 car to a untuned factory juke. Just just the difference on the same boost level, how it feels up top. But I've blabbed on enough about that. But let me know. Do you think I'm talking a bunch of garbage um, or? Does this make sense to you guys? I would love to do animations, but unfortunately I'm not that skilled with a computer. Uh, so make sure you guys have a good day. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Uh, make sure you go check out the new website we have up, thefastreligion.com. You can get all kinds of merch, decals, and you can also read more about the builds we're doing. In the meantime, why don't you check out these other cool videos that we have going on, and make sure you hit that subscribe button.